Yeah, Jeff, we've, we're all aware of the increased production requirements in agriculture being promoted by industry uh, in recent presentations. Jeff, in your opinion, where is the extra production in agriculture going to come from? It's going to come from a whole range of technologies and fertilisers will be one of a number of um, technologies which, which farmers employ to um, enhance their productivity and, 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 and production longer term. So it's probably not going to come from one, one only but a whole suite of, of technologies, fertilisers just being one of them. Jeff, there's been a lot of discussion in presentations at this conference about the application of fertilisers and gravel and the effects of gravel in, in terms of usage of nutrients. We've got a long way to go, haven't we, in terms of user and farmer education? Yeah, look, I think there, there's certainly opportunities to, to manage nutrients better. Um, to, we've got uh, technologies that, that help us to um, understand um, better the, the nutrients that are in the soil and um, make better estimates of the uh, likely crop yields and therefore to be able to match up what we, the, the crops actually need with what we're actually uh, applying to them in, in fertilisers. <coughs> we listen to people talking about lime and, and uh, talking about gravel and short and long term applications. Jeff, where are we going with all of this? Yeah, look, there's certainly uh, a lot more that, that um, I think can be put into practice in terms of, um, of nutrient management. Um, and, and, and having people that have uh, got the knowledge and skills um, as well as um, that are applying um, competent um, practices or, or sound practices um, that are um, using laboratories that are, are, um, meet the proficiency requirements and produce repeatable numbers um, will be part of the whole process of, of uh, improving the way we uh, manage nutrients longer term. Jeff, to become an accredited advisor, is this an, an intensive yep. examination of your past history? Is it an exam or just exactly what's involved? Yeah, the, the FERT Care accredited advisor component is, is, is not a training course. The, the, the program assumes that people already have the knowledge and skills to become a FERT Care accredited advisor. It's an assessment process. Um, so. That process can be undertaken in two ways. One is through a systems assessment, and what we mean by a system is something like nutrient advantage ad advice or new logic. Um, summit fertilisers, they have systems, um, and you can be part of an assessed system. The other alternative is for, for a, an individual to go through an individual assessment um, uh, and become a FERT care accredited advisor. Jeff, in relation to past experiences in the, in, the, in the dairy industry in terms of nutrient budgeting. Is budgeting and nutrient budgeting part of accreditation? Yeah, the, 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 um, the Fert Care Accredited Advisor Program references um, industry um, benchmarks or industry like, for example, the, 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 the um, Better Fertiliser Decisions Projects in the grain industry, um, which um, has um, provided good data on things like critical soil test values, uh, nutrient budgeting, things of that nature, to help make sure that um, um, you know, advisors are basing their recommendations on, on, the, on the latest uh, information um, that is uh, accepted science in Australia. Jeff, in relation to the two yearly accreditation examination, how serious is that? Is it a tick in the box or is it a fairly intensive examination. Yeah, look, it's 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 more than just a tick a box thing. Um, um, you're asked to provide a list of the uh, recommendations that you provided in the last two years, um, as well as um, the the basis for your recommendations, and um, um, any of the recommendations that have been done in the last two years can be picked up in that um, in that assessment in that audit process. So. It's not just turn up and, and get, get the tick, it's uh, actually looking at the recommendations that have actually been, been made in the preceding two year period. Um, becoming accredited, there's, there's no real minimum standard for advisors um, um, before FERT Care Accredited Advisor Program and anyone can call themselves an agronomist and start providing advice. Um, and as a result of that, we've got a wide variation in the quality of the advice that's given to farmers. What, what this program seeks to do is to provide a minimum standard of advice um, for farmers 
so that it's based on good practice on sound science um, and, and competent lab laboratories, prof prof proficient laboratories, um, so that, that the, um, the industry is acting not only in terms of the best interests of the client in terms of optimising his productivity, but minimising other risks such as movement of nutrients into waterways, for example, um, where that's been a particular issue in, in places like the, the Swan and Scotch River uh, Coastal Plain in Western Australia or the Her World Heritage Listed Great Barrier Reef in North Queensland. Um, the, the practices of, of, um, of, of, of farmers in those catchments is under scrutiny and um, FERT care has been e accepted in those um, in those areas um, by natural resource managers as one of the steps by which um, we can get better, better practices happening on farm around nutrient management. Jeff, um, you mentioned that you had got involved in, a, in, a, in sorting out an issue with regard to phosphates in, in Western Australia. And uh, can you just give us a, a rundown of how you resolve that situation? Look, it was a process of, of um, the fertiliser industry getting engaged um, and, and being part of the, uh, of the discussion. Um, there was certainly concern around the water quality um, um, that, was, that was being um, happening in, in the catchments, in, for the, in the Swan River, for example, um, and was of concern to the public and um, therefore, you know, flowed on to politicians and, and to government, natural resource managers, etc. Um, so the industry took a stand of getting involved and, and, and being um, part of, of working through the issues and, and providing us a, a uh, potential part solution. Um, fertilisers are only a part of the, the, the issue, fertiliser management is part, as, as part of the issue, not, not the whole issue. Um, and so FertCare provides substance to the industry's approach of, of um, you know, objective, site-specific nutrient management pains at a paddock level. Jeff, having to deal with some of these environmental issues must be a challenge. Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, some of these issues invoke strong emotional responses from, from people. Uh, I guess the, the challenge is to, um, is to um, find the areas of common agreement and, and to be able to work constructively um, through to, to find solutions that are likely to produce the outcomes that we're all looking for. I, I think um, farmers are, by their nature, cons you know, they're conservationists. They want to, they want to look after their, their land and, and the, the waterways that, they, um, that, that are flow within and around their land. Um, so, you know, I think, I think everyone, you know, we can, there are opportunities for improvement in the way we, we do manage nutrients. Um, and I think we need to be taking them um, so that we get more of the nutrients that we apply into the plant um, and into the harvested produce of, the, of, of, uh, of our crops and, and um, livestock systems um, and minimise the amount that goes elsewhere. Um, it makes sense from a, from a, from a farm productivity, from an economic perspective, uh, from a farmer's perspective. It also makes sense from from a natural resource management perspective. We want the, the nutrients where they're going to do productive good for, for, for us as, as a society. We don't want them in, in waterways or uh, other places that aren't helpful for us. So Jeff, the, the better placement of fertilisers and the better uses of fertiliser uh, seems to be the way to go in the future? Absolutely. I think there, there is a win-win in this in terms of better nutrient management which results in, in more targeted use of nutrients so that we get more into the harvested produce um, and less going into other places where it's not helpful for, for us, you know, for example, into waterways, we want to avoid that. It makes no economic sense for farmers to be applying nutrients that end up in waterways. They, they want to make investment in, in nutrients that are going to produce, produce crops, produce uh, livestock that, that, that they can sell. So you know, um, you know, farmers um, will, will make wise choices once they're armed with the information. And we need to have advisors which can help, help our farmers um, um, make good choices, uh, make, make uh, wise decisions in the circumstances in which they face and uh, get the best uh, return out of the uh, investment that they make in, in uh, fertilisers and, and nutrients.